Do la. Welcome back to Ju Yi Zhao Bei. Got another fun lesson for us today. We get to play with fire. We talked in the past about how we were going to break down the specifics of each of the consonants. Today is the first one, and we're going to talk about the letter H. And great news, the letter H is one of the easiest consonants to learn in Hmong. So this is going to be a lot of fun. First, how do I say it? Well, it's not so much a sound as it is air that comes out. So the Hmong H is something that we call aspirated. It's, it's air coming out of our mouth or of our nose. You can test it yourself. Do you feel breath on your hand when you say an H? Out of our mouth or of our nose? So I have something that I really want to show you, and this is well expressed by this movie clip from My Fair Lady, where a English professor is teaching proper pronunciation, and in this case, H's. Let's take a peek. So there's a couple different situations that we can use H in the Hmong language. The first is if you'll see on my worksheet here is when it's at the beginning of a word, which at this point is very similar to an English H. Think of some words that start with H in English. How, hot, heat, heavy, her, right? Okay, so for Hmong H, when it starts with an H, it's going to be the same thing. So follow me on the worksheet. Hmong, Hmong. This one comes out of the nose because there's a consonant right after the H that closes off our airway. Mm, mm, mm. So air can't come out the mouth if we're using that. We have to bring it out the nose. Hmong, Hmong. Next one, it's gonna be open through our mouth so the air can come out of our mouth. Hlu. Hlu. Follow me. Hlu. Good. Next one. Hnu. Out the nose again because the N is closing off our airway down in here. Hnu. Next we have hu. Out the mouth. Hu. Hu. Hi. Hang, how lu, hi ning. Next, you'll see that the H is not always going to be in the first place in the word. It can be uh, in with a consonant cluster. Let's see some examples on the worksheet. Follow me. Tia, ta, te, kia. Chong Chia Chua Che Chong Chia. So you're getting good at rocking these H's and the breath is coming out. Very good. All right. But now H's means that it's breathy and air is coming out. But you also told me that the G tone is breathy. So what's the difference and how do I know how to do an H consonant versus a G tone? Let's take a look at some pronunciation drills that will show us the difference. One major difference as we go through these to pay attention and listen for is the H usually still has a nice clean strong ending and the difference is that the G the ending is what's softened and fades out. Okay follow me. Ha versus ah. Hey. A. He, e, ha, ah, hu, u, hu, u, how, ow, hua, ua, ho, o, hang, eng, hia, ia, hong, ong. Hua, ua, 
Kang, Ang. All right, good job. So there's some common challenges. One, adding an H to words that don't actually have one, or forgetting the H to words that actually do. So what can we do about this? Actually, just do the work. Read, write, and do flashcards. Whatever it takes for you to see the word, visualize the word, know how the word is spelled. If we always know how it's spelled, we're always going to know how to say it. Here on the worksheet, let's talk about one of the examples. Words that don't have an H, that tend to get an H added to them. There are many, many, many. But here's just a couple of examples. Let's look at the first example. T-U-A-G. Toa. Toa. It's not toa. Toa. Let's look at another one. Ocho. Ocho. It's not ocho. Ocho. They. It's not they. It's they. Shi zong is not shi zong. It's shi zong. Zha sa zhong. No h. Don't feel anything. If you can feel it, that means you're putting an h in there. Van zu, jaining, taki. Okay, very good. Now there's another situation. Sometimes we're really H happy and we like to add H's to everything, whether or not they have one. Or sometimes we forget, we're nervous, and we don't add an H to anything. So sometimes there's word combinations that one has an H and the other one doesn't. What do we do there? Let's practice. So on the worksheet, follow me. Cha da. La hla. Zha ge hlu. Dan cha. Now here's something else to think about. Sometimes when we mispronounce a word, it doesn't really have any meaning, we understand. But sometimes you change the meaning of the word entirely. Look here on the worksheet. Zhao, which is somebody who's skilled, able to do something. So, if you add the H, so, all of a sudden you're worried, you're concerned about something. So you come up to somebody and they're sitting outside doing the embroidery. You want to say, oh, but you say, so you're changing it from, oh, you're really good at pandao to, oh, you're worried about your pandao, you're anxious. Not really a sentence we would use, but you've changed the word. Or you're with someone and they're they're worried about something. You can see that they're distressed, and they're nervous about a part they have, or something coming up, and you say ta ta ta. So don't worry. But if you say ta ta, don't be skilled at it. Don't do a good job. So yes, it's a little thing. We know you're probably trying to say ta ta, but it's good to say ta ta, not ta ta. It's a little, huh? Another example, G versus chi. One is not, one is goat. Lu, hlu, changes from a classifier to the word love. J versus che, one is to distribute, one is a car. Notice here on J versus che that it sounds like the consonant has changed. The TS by itself is like the letter J. J J J T S J J J J J, but when we add that puff of air, Ch Ch, it sounds like it's all of a sudden changed to a C H. It really hasn't. It's still the J. J J J J Ch J Ch. The positioning of the tongue and the mouth and your lips is still the same. You should keep it the same for the T S sound. All you're adding is a puff of air. J Che, J, Che, Che, J, Che. Nothing should really be changing. D versus T. One's a marker for like tone marker. One is angry and upset. Or Gong versus Kong. One is unity, cooperation. The other one is 
to available. I'm free. So making these little mistakes can cause our listener to misunderstand and what? Or maybe they understand you, but just subtracting or adding this little H can have a lot of difference in the word. So we really want to practice every Hmong sound, even this cute little puff of air. So I like to look at it like a recipe. If I leave out an ingredient, it's probably going to be okay, but it probably won't taste as good as if I had added it. So since I really want to make the best thing for them, I want to work really hard in getting the recipe right. I don't know if that helps you, but the more ingredients we have in the right place, the better tasting it will be, the easier it will be for our listeners to understand. And it's not about us. It's about what we have to give to them. So now it's on you. Print out the worksheets and download the audio files that come with it and practice them together over and over and over again. You'll see there's some exercises where you can just get any brochure. Please practice reading, practice writing, Practice with flashcards, whatever it takes for you to visualize and to see and to spell the word. This week, focus on the H's, look at them, purposely say them, purposely don't say them where they don't belong. And I know you'll be (sighs) breathing your way all through Hmong perfectly in no time. You can do it. Keep it up. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time on Ji Dope.